is going to be a fun one, guys. So today, unlike yesterday's video, we're going to go at a deeper dive here. We're going to look at the four different phases of consolidation that have occurred throughout Tesla's history. You can see them in this chart. We're going to talk about my bear case for Tesla and what I think it could do. I think it could go from 420 to potentially 69, which would be poetry. It would let us know that we're living in Elon Musk's game in the Matrix. It would be a thing of beauty. I don't know if it's going to happen, but gosh, would I love it if it did. We're going to talk about, again, a deeper dive into the financials here and talk about the play that I made and what, what I'll end up getting even as the lowest rung of my goals are met in the next 2.3 years. So we'll be, we'll be soup to nuts on Tesla talking about the things that have occurred and the things that are going to occur in the future and why I believe conservatively it is easy for us to get to my low end target of $600 in Tesla and why I believe we'll get at least to the 920 level, the golden Fibonacci retracement zone. So without further ado, let's get started here. Let's focus first on the bear case. So one of the things I want to note here, just I've, I've said this in another video, but maybe you haven't caught that. You'll see that Tesla had one, two, three major attempts to the upside. One could argue this is almost four. And then broke down under the 200 moving average in, in orange here, like a dark orange. Wicked furiously and established a new low. So you got two points, right? Or three points of consolidation down here, right? Uh, to establish a support zone. Now, what's interesting is, and I'll, I'll just make a note here real quick. I bought the hell out of this dip and I made uh, over a quarter of a million dollars. I think as high as like 700, 800% returns buying in the 100 range when everybody else were scared to death and running away. I'm very proud of that. I sold a bunch over here and up here and over here. And then we, I said, hey, I think we're going to drop again. I'm seeing weakness. And we did. And now we're where we are. And I said, hey, I think we got a bear flag here. We're going to drop further. And we did. Now I'm saying there's a chance we could bounce. But if we don't, if we go under the dot .618, God willing, I hope it happens. I would love it. I will be buying all the way down with the gains I make from Bitcoin and potentially fintech or anything else. I might even, again, I think the odds of Bitcoin and crypto, at least Bitcoin, even in a down environment, I think the odds of Bitcoin being a hedge over the next six to 12 months is a high likelihood. And so you could use that instead of traditional hedging. Now, I do have over 60,000 ish maybe 70, I, I don't, I'd have to look at the number right now, in shorts on Best Buy and Starbucks right now. And there's another rep, there's another um, video I'm going to make that's going to include some other opportunities for my members. I'm going to shoot that out. So if you're a Starter Pack member and pay $2.99 a month or, or higher for, for membership, the rest right now are just kind of doing it out of the kindness of their heart for the alphas and for the whales. But I will give more to those later as well. Um, but I'm just getting started. I've only been doing this four months. But, if, but those people will get other hedge opportunities as well. But I digress. I think that Bitcoin is probably the best hedge right now. That's why I haven't been in a rush to make this video because I think it's one of the best, at least over the next six months, um, potentially over a year, year and a half, based upon historical uh, cycles. But so if we get a strong drop down here, I have no doubt I'm going to, between my hedging that I already have and Bitcoin being a potential hedge, which I think it will be, have plenty of money to buy the dip down. And I'm still going to stick with the contracts I have, the June 2026, 330 strikes, probably the whole way. So if we got this, I want this. I want it to go down. So when you think about bias and you're watching this video, don't come at it assuming that I am suckling off of Elon's tit and that I believe everything is sunshine and rainbows and that I think that we're just going straight up from here. I want it to drop. I want it to. So look at it through that lens, okay? Now, let's get back to these phases I wanted to talk about because these are important. These phases, on average, have lasted about 950 days before going higher. And dramatically, in some cases, the first phase went up 1,840% after that 900 days. So roughly two and a half to three years, right? And then the second phase only went up 174. And this is from the low to the high of the next phase, right? 
Now this one, why didn't it go higher? I'll tell you why it didn't go higher. The company was in a world of hurt around that time. They had the first S delivery. So back here, you can see where they had, or I'm sorry, the S in phase one. It took about nine months before they really started to make some headway. And people thought, whoa, this is cool. This is something real. And then the price exploded 1,840%, right, in total from bottom to top. Now, phase two and three were much harder for this company. This company was in pain. These time frames last from 2014 to the end of 2019. And this is crucial because if you look at vehicle deliveries over that time, 2014 to 19, look how tiny these are. They were growing, but look at how tiny this is compared to where we are today. And this is 2023. 2024 is guiding for higher, right? Now, also, look at revenue segments and how painful they were. 2014 to 2019, look at this. And even more important, one of the most important, look at net income and how this company was doing. This is crucial. 2014 to 19, those years, they were bleeding money. 2017 being the worst at $2 billion. These guys were like Rivian bleeding, but much better managed. Now, here's what I want to reflect. So we had this really tough time where we had the X ramp and we had the first Model 3 delivery. Um, let's see here, around August, July of 2017. This was the worst ramp in Tesla's history. They, it got so bad, they realized they had went too far with automation and they'd fucked up. They had to literally start building cars in tents to keep from going bankrupt. One of the worst times and hardest in Elon's work career. He was going through a lot between SpaceX and Tesla around this time. It was painful for him. But after a, over two years of pain and misery going into June of 2019 at the absolute lows. And this is split adjusted, but it's 1185 in here. It was more like in the 80s, if I remember correctly, around that time, because I was buying hard into this. Because that's what I do. I buy good companies when other people run from them, and then I make a fortune. Now, if you look here, you could see that after that time, we had a 3,300% move in the years ahead. From the bottom of June 2019 to the top of October of 2021. So, in two years, this company went up 3,300%. And morons were buying this thing up here at in the 400s when the P-E ratio, profit to earnings, was 1,400. 1,400. And these same people are bitching now because they've lost money on this and the company isn't doing enough and Elon won't keep his mouth shut because he keeps talking on X because he has opinions and wants to make the world a better place. And so real quickly, again, I want the stock to go down, but yes, I like Elon Musk. I think he's one of the best visionaries on the planet. So do I have a bias? Fuck yeah, I do. I totally do. So if you're watching this video, look at it and realize through the lens of my eyes, they're very biased, but that doesn't mean I'm wrong. All right, I'm fired up today, man. Had a lot of Starbucks coffee. This is going to be fun. All right, so the idiots or ill-informed investors, if it's you, just think of yourself as an ill-informed investor. You didn't have me at the time, right? They bought this thing at a PE ratio at 1,400. And then they've had opportunity cost for over two years, two and a half years. They All they've done is lose money. And I, I get it. I get it from an emotional standpoint. If you made the wrong move on your timing and got excited about a stock going to the moon after going up 34%, 3,400% in two years, I get how painful it could be to watch yourself at one point lose 75% of that value if you bought at the top only to have hope that it was going back up, then to have it roll over again. I get it. It hurts. Get over your emotions, though. This is investing. This is how this stuff works. Shouldn't be driven by your emotion. I know this sounds weird coming from a guy who's as amped as I am today, but it's true. You, shouldn't, you should be getting excited when the things that you believe hold value go down. You shouldn't be upset. 
You should be positioned to capitalize off of that. That's what I do. That's what I try and teach people. Real quick, not a financial advisor. I'm a wannabe macroeconomist who became a self-made millionaire. I've actually been bankrupt in my life. I'm a high school dropout who only went to school for a year and a half. I had very few accomplishments before my investment career. But in my investment career, I am one of the best people I know at. And I say that not just here in my little region, but around the world from the people that do this. My returns are sick and have been for over five years. So, and I made a lot of mistakes. I went bankrupt in 2008 because I didn't even know what options were. And I was YOLOing in like an idiot. So when I talk about fools being stupid, buying this stock at a 1400 PE ratio, I have been a fool. I am speaking from personal experience. I'm a good investor now. I'm a great investor now because of being a fool in the past. And instead of running away and quitting, which technically I did for quite a few years, <laughs> just to be clear, <laughs> instead of running away and quitting, eventually coming back and then really putting effort into it and never giving up again. Never again. So I, that's a heck of a rant I just went on. So I want to apologize. But let's get back to this here in this chart and looking at financials and talking about why this is going to be one of the biggest companies in the world in less than five years and maybe sooner. So again, we had the wide delivery during all this craziness, but the company was starting to perform. So the wide delivery was occurring. Let's go back here. The wide delivery was occurring around March of, or I'm sorry, I think it was February 2020. I was one of the first ones to get it around that time. And, um, and it was, it was interesting because the, 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 the cars around that time, again, you got to realize like everybody's getting locked down, but people are excited about Tesla and the stock is getting ready to explode to the moon in an environment where people aren't even leaving their houses. It's just a very strange world. But if you look here at what was going on with the company around that time, again, in 2020, they were growing their net income was actually had actually turned positive for the first time ever. They made 690 million that year. Now, what I want you to focus on is look at what it's done since. This isn't a loser. This is a company that has seen its PE ratio drop from 1400 to 40. If you're not good at math, that is a 97.8% drop in that metric. This company is way more affordable now than it was back then. Way more affordable. And then when we look at things like cash to debt, look at this. Look at how much money they have. And their Bitcoin is gaining value too. I think it's like a billion or something now. But look at how they were in 2020. They were just getting better. Just getting better. Before that, the debt was scary, but improving because their cash position was improving. Now look at them. And then the next time, it's going to be off the charts these next couple of years. Look at operating leverage on this company. Look at this. I don't know that I've ever seen a chart like this before. This is, this is a faster rate than like Apple was back in the day. This company is growing faster than any company in history. This is Bitcoin level stuff here. And yet people are looking at Tesla and they're like, oh my God, why is Elon talking again? Oh, it's never going to do any good. You guys were all just fooled. It's, it's stupid. It's emotional. It's narrative driven. It's idiotic. This company is doing amazing. The amount of growth we're seeing is amazing. And then we're going to see things. We see cogs coming down all the time. This just means that the price of the vehicles are getting cheaper and cheaper, right? They're getting cheaper and cheaper. This is the pink here. You can see how the, sure, the price of the Teslas has been coming down. But their cost has come down too. On average, these things are like $36,000 to build. And that's only going to get better. The Model 2 ramp will make that even cheaper. And I'm going to argue, we don't have all the Cybertruck metrics yet, but I'm going to argue that it's even better. Because here's something that people don't understand. Yes, is it scary that you can get a Cybertruck early right now? That's what people seem to think. That's a narrative I'm hearing. Like, oh, this guy got his Cybertruck early. I don't know, man. That's probably a pretty bad sign. No, it's not. The price of these things, the base cost is much higher than it was supposed to be originally. And not just that. People like me are paying 20000 
extra dollars to get the Foundation series, which consists of a couple of logos and some other shit that doesn't really matter and costs them nothing to do just so we can get them early. Everybody right now is Foundation Series. I'm going to pay over $120,000 for this truck. And I'll do it gladly so I can support this company and so that I can have it. And, and there's tons of people like me. So these guys aren't even going to have the issues that they had with the Model 3 ramp because they're demanding a premium on these vehicles. And they've been behind the scenes grinding away on this for a long time to get it right. Will there be hurdles? Sure. But I actually think I was originally way more scared about the Cybertruck ramp. Now that I see how they're pricing and I see the extra add-ons they have, which they didn't really have for the other cars, and then I look at what I'm probably going to pay for the ticket price on this thing, I'll probably spend $130,000 on this on this truck in the end no doubt maybe even more right just with all the extra bolt-ons and stuff and so i think that the ramp of the cyber truck won't actually hurt them i don't know that that's a popular narrative right now also first deliveries of the model 2 are expected in 2025 or earlier and this is coming out of giga texas they were smart I actually had an argument a while ago, I think, with Jeff Lutz, who I respect greatly. He's got a manufacturing background. He's a doer. He is somebody that actually has real-world knowledge. But we were arguing about whether or not Tesla would lower their margins and, and just destroy their profitability in order to be able to scale. And I won that argument. And part of my argument was that Giga Mexico might be delayed, because they don't want to spend all the money on it right now because they want to ramp up existing facilities and so they might slow roll it. And I got both of those things right. Giga Mexico has been slow rolled. They're building the Model 2 and have been for like a year or maybe a little bit less, but like around that time at Giga Texas, secretly, they've been working on this the whole time. Read Elon's book, listen to the interviews, listen to his comments. They've been doing this, listen to, listen to Hans. They've been doing this for a while. So this thing could come sooner than people expect. And it's it's it makes sense that they would do it sooner. It makes sense. Because if we have a recession or some kind of economic downturn, you want to make the most affordable U.S. EV that can possibly be made compared to anybody else in this country. Now, I'm not even factoring in $7,500 instant tax credits that are available on almost all of Tesla's vehicles right now. But again, these are just some catalysts. I'm not factoring in a lot of stuff. I'm assuming energy grows at a decent pace. Solar just doesn't do anything, but it could. It could. Rates are going to start coming down probably in June right now per the CM CME Fed Watch tool. And I think that that's very likely. I follow macroeconomics very closely. So I think rates are coming down. And history tells us when they come down, People that have a bunch of money, which is a lot of people, because you got to realize we did the greatest amount of money printing in history. Over 35 to 40 percent of the money that's ever existed was created in the last four years. So if you go back to the birth of this country in 1776 to 2020, that was the other 65 percent, 60 percent. Just think about that. So we had, were awash with money. We had real estate go up on average 35% since that time in value. So you have all these retirees that have quit their jobs. They've got tons of home equity. The smart ones took out loans against that when rates were cheap. But they've done they've done really, really well. And they've had tons of money. This When I say they, I'm talking about 65%, 70% of this country that has investments. It's like it's around 65% that have investments in real estate. And, and investments in the stock market. These people have gotten richer, not poorer. Two-thirds of this country has gotten richer. Two-thirds. It's the, it's the lower middle class to poor that have gotten screwed. So when rates come down, these people that have been enriched will be able to take all the money that's been printed that's still sitting over $6 trillion in money markets and just all this crap sitting out there already. And we're in an election year where 
not just for us, but the entire world, there are over 4 billion people voting for a new president this year. 4 billion, that's the majority of the world is voting right now. And during election years, people spend a ton of money. And you better believe Joe Biden will do it too. Trump would do it if he was in office. It's just how it works. It's politics. So we have, if you look at global liquidity, it's expanding, not contracting. You can't have major recessions when there's money flowing everywhere. Why do you think the stock market has been going up since 2023? Like I called it. And so if, if we're still in an expansion and then you have rates coming down, energy storage with all the government incentives that are out there, massive incentives. You can pay for a lot of these things almost with what you get in government subsidies, not just here, but in Europe and other parts of the world. And then solar starts to kick in because then it becomes more economically viable for retail and commercial real estate or, or commercial uh, 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 buildings to start putting solar on. And battery systems. You you could see massive in this. Even if we don't get FSD in two and a half years, like I think we will, that I'm not incorporating into my numbers, I think that these things happen. So you just have to realize, you have to realize that the supercharging network for Tesla, the supercharging network, they are the gas station for the United States for EVs. Do you realize that? Do you realize that that Rivian, Ford, GM, Porsche, I think like Kia, uh, Hyundai, all these companies have already decided on the North American standard, which is Tesla's. They, they have the infrastructure. These things are already everywhere and they keep expanding at a record pace. Look at this. This is just going back to 2019. They had 1,490 at the beginning of 2019. They have almost 6,000 today. They actually probably already have over this because this is the end of 2023. So, and this is like, th this is just something you have to realize. There are between expansion and revenue segments from energy deployments, whether it be solar, solar roofs, super expensive, not even viable. Most people won't get them right now for Tesla. It's going to take some work to make that happen. They don't appear to be focused on it. And I don't blame them. Not when you can get cheap solar from, from China. You don't focus on it, right? You just let the cheap solar happen. But battery storage will explode. And when you look here at revenue by segments and you do this on a yearly basis, that's probably the easiest way to look at it. You can see how much services and energy have been growing. And they can. They can keep growing at, at record paces. So we'll see energy getting better because of the deployments of the battery storage. We'll be seeing the services sector grow because there's just more on the road. We're going to see automotive revenues continue to grow. Remember, Elon actually said the energy business will be bigger than the auto business. And then at the same time, you have autonomy and robotics, which he said that that would be bigger than energy. And we're giving ourselves... 2.3 years to see this revenue grow and outpace expenses on my investment. Here's what I got going on. I actually, right now, I included, I got some in my wife's account too. So I got 109 contracts, roughly 2,504 for the price of the contracts, June, 2026 for a $330 call, which means for me to break even, I have to get to $330 by June of 2026. So that's assuming that Tesla's price is lower than it is than it was at its previous high. 330 to my break even point is here and it assumes that Tesla in four and a half years after its all-time high in 2021 is still down 18%. I don't think it's going to be down 18%. Do you think with everything I just told you that in 2.3 years, Tesla is going to be down 18% from its all-time high? I don't. I actually think conservatively that we hit $600. And if we hit $600, if I go down here, this is 588 technically, so I'll have to like look in between these. But that's assuming Tesla goes up 236% from where it is today. I will make over 2.5 million, probably about 1,000%, almost a 10-bagger 
almost a 10 bagger on this investment of $272,000. Think about that. Is that not a great risk adjusted return? Then think about this. I want it to go to $69. I will buy a whole bunch more when everybody's bitching and moaning and crying and all these Tesla bulls are talking about how the company has failed us. Like they did over here when I was buying my calls at 100. If they do that again, I'll be gobbling this shit up while people are calling me an idiot. I'll gladly do it. And I'll do it off of my gains from Bitcoin or my hedges if the economy has taken a shit. And then, if I can triple my position on this, let's say that I get it at a lower level. Let's say that I end up with 350 contracts, but they've bled. So my average now is like, let's say $13 a contract. Actually, let's go 11 because it's probably it would really bleed, right? 25 right now. Let's say it goes down to 11. And I end up buying, you know what though? I'll, I'll buy higher. I'll keep buying the whole way. Let's put it at 14. So we've, we're looking at like, a, I don't know, like a 45% drop in contract value on average from what my purchase price is. That means I've put a half a million dollars into these things, right? Well, if we get back up and just hit the all-time high, if I do this, if we just hit the all-time high, I make around $3 million off of this bet. By, by June of 2026, if we can just get to the previous all-time high. And I can tell you, I think that's incredibly doable. And, and it would be $3 million worth of gains. Now, if I'm right, and the company makes an amazing recovery, because like autonomy, robotics, or the Model 2 have done really well, then I would make a bigger number. I would make 4,000% in returns off of that. And let me just do the... And $19.5 million in profit off of 490000 4,000%. That's what I call an asymmetric bet. That's the stuff I try and teach you guys. So if you want to follow me, I'm going to throw an Options 101 video at the end of this. People tell me it's the best options video they've ever seen. If you guys have questions at the end of it, please let me know what they are. I, will, I can answer those in an updated video and do like a 202 or something if there's additional questions. But I don't know. I highly suggest that if you're interested in anything that I've said that you like, comment to support the channel. Make sure you ring the bell so you know when I make these things so that you can be the first to see them. And if you are if you join the channel and become a member, I'm going to be doing another video here, um, hopefully even today, in regard to hedging. And that's going to be members only for a week. That's the way it's going to work. I might even make it a two-week thing where when I make members only videos, and that you can be a member at the starter pack for $2.99 a month. That's all it is. It's not a lot of money. And there's Alpha too, where it's like $9.99, and then there's Whale for $25. Those tiers right now are just people supporting me out of the kindness of their heart. They're not getting a lot extra outside of, I do a daily market recap five days a week. And in that, after we get done talking about the macroeconomic view, what's going on in indices, what's going on in oil, what's going on with the dollar, what economic indicators were released that day, what my viewpoint is on it, and other major news events and what I believe has happened and what I believe is coming, then we jump into the stocks I'm invested in and look at those charts and then we do a session where anybody, any member can give a stock and ask me to look it up. I will pull it up. And if they're a, a, a starter pack, they get one. If they're an alpha, they get two for that session. And if they're a whale, they can do three. And I will try and keep going until I fill them all. Sometimes I get a little tired. But here's the thing. If, you, if I miss you one day to the next, you can just pop up in the feed because I spend these things off in the morning and throw your comment in with your stock or stocks, depending upon your level, right at the top. And we'll get to them first so that we don't miss you a second day. So, but I think it's a lot of value because I don't just go over charts like some people and tell you TA. I dig up the financials and I, and I look at their guidance and I tell you what I think based upon my experience of the company and, and what their financials look like and their forward guidance combined with the TA. And I don't think you'll get that anywhere. I haven't found it. That's why I started doing it because I couldn't find it anywhere. Anyway, 
it's Sunday. I got coffee to drink, coffee to drink. And, uh, and I'm getting a little tired here. I might make another video. Like I said, I might do that hedging one for members only. But if you guys want, like what you're seeing, if you like the way I look at this stuff, please do that. Join, do whatever. And um, otherwise, I will talk to you in my next video. And if nothing else, I'll see you Monday. Uh, Monday, there will not be a market recap. I actually have a special episode with Tom Nash. Uh, it's my first time really getting to talk to him. He's been a great guy. He's been a hella supporter of me. Um, he's got like 310,000 subscribers on YouTube and a following on X. But he's been a really great guy. Even before I got my YouTube channel, he's been trying to get me on. And so we'll be doing that on Monday instead of the market recap at 3 o'clock Central Time. So no market recap Monday. But um, outside of that, though, it'll be happening the rest of the week. And then also I've got my new segment with Future Invest, Tanner, um, that we'll be doing on Fridays where we kind of look at big ideas and talk about, you know, other investment opportunities. Again, more macro type stuff uh, so that people aren't aren't just living in this little tiny world and they can see the bigger picture. It's kind of the goal. So I love you guys. I love all my supporters. I greatly appreciate all of you. You have a great day.